Have you ever wondered what the difference is between somebody just starting their business and not getting results from the effort versus somebody who's a first generation cash flow million that just seems to be smashing over and over and over and making more money? I know that feeling of that type of frustration. And because I know it, I'm gonna show you how to overcome it in this episode of the Seven Figure Squad starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor. Yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And I'm wondering if you have ever found yourself in this position. Ever wondering why the person has all the talent the college degrees, the charisma, the looks, the car, the house, the resume. How come they don't necessarily win in business versus the person who seems to be very average and ordinary, but yet smashing it in business as an entrepreneur? What's the difference between these two people? Very simple. You know what it is? It's called clarity. One more time, clarity. Let me ask you guys a question. If somebody asks you to go to a destination that you've never been to, What's probably the first thing you ask them? If you want me to get somewhere, what is the what? Address. So therefore, you can take that address and plug it into your GPS, so therefore it takes you from your door to the door of where somebody expects you to be, correct? And because you have that address, guess what you have now? Clarity of where you're going, where you're gonna be spending time on the road going to, traffic to avoid, obstacles to go around, Think about that. You would not leave your address without understanding what? The address you're going to, otherwise it'd be one big waste of time. So, let's break this down. Let me give you a formula to get to where you wanna go. Number one, establish what it is that you want in business. Some of you say, I want a house, Matt. I want a new car. I wanna travel the world. I wanna be debt free. I wanna be independent financially. I wanna earn self-respect for myself. I don't ever wanna be laid off. I don't ever want somebody else telling me I'm essential or non-essential. I don't ever want anybody else controlling my income, making me feel less significant in my life, et cetera, et cetera, whatever that is. What is it that you want? What is it that you want? Sometimes people lack clarity in what exactly it is that they want. And in that process of what it is that you want, let me ask you a question. Are you specific? Are you specific about what you want? Are you specific about the zip code, the, the, the paint of the car that you want, the color of the car that you want? Are you specific with the rims that you want? Are you specific with the interior, the, the, the leather interior? Uh, uh, how does it smell? Uh, where are you gonna pick it up? How are you gonna pick it up? How are you gonna finance it? Are you gonna buy cash? Are you specific of where are you gonna go travel? Are you gonna travel first class economy, business class? Are you gonna have reclining seats? Are you gonna have the, the bed that you lie on so therefore 9, 10, 11, our travel is less, is less painful. Do you know what it's gonna feel like to have a burning party of your mortgage statement, your credit card statement, your student loan statement? What that's, what's that gonna feel like? Are you very clear on what it's gonna feel like to be financially independent? Now, I, I talk about it all the time with our guys here, is how would you like to experience food freedom? You know about talking about food freedom? Here's what food freedom means. How many times you sat down at a restaurant and you open the menu and you say, wow, I want this. Ooh, that sounds good. Ooh, this, this has gotta be delicious. So you start off on the left side of the menu, then you work your way down to what you want, then you go to the right side of the menu, and like, damn, why? Because you see how much it costs. And then you read, not going to the left, you read going up, you read from the right side of the menu, you go vertical in your menu, because you know the higher you go back on the menu, the cheaper the prices are. You guys know what I'm talking about? And then you find out what you can afford, and you read to the left of what it is, and you say, I guess I'm not eating steak today, let me just get the soup and salad. See, that's what I'm talking about, food freedom. How would you like to be able to say, you know what, mom, dad, for all that you've done for me, you never have to pay for another meal while we eat out together. How would you like to be able to say that? See, these are the type of things that I got very clear on in my life, because here's the thing. Until somebody feels any great pain, does one then decide to change? Unless somebody gets the feeling of what specific feeling that will get by either avoiding a pain avoiding pain or obtaining what they want, will anybody make a serious shift in their behaviors to get towards what they want? Because if you're not specific about what you want and you're just general about it, well, guess what, my friends? You'll never get it. Oftentimes, I sit down with somebody and I ask them, what, how much income do you want to make in your business? 
Oh, just enough to pay the bills. Oh, just enough to be financially free, enough to not worry about money. And then my next question is this, well, how much money is that? Well, I don't know. You see, that person will never get to what they want because they're not specific. They don't know what it takes to lay off their boss. They don't know what it takes to be debt free. They don't know what it takes to be in a position where they're sliding a credit card or sli sliding their, their debit card to pay for food or buy a car. And I have to worry about being in a dealership and somebody says, no, this is what you qualify for instead. Do you want to remove those feelings? Well, more important, are you specific about that type of feeling, that type of specifics in terms of getting what you want? Because again, if you're not specific and detailed about it, guess what? You'll never get it. So this leads me to my next point. If you, how? Assuming that you are specific of what you want, of what that is, and you're clear about it, now question is, why do you want it? Why do you want to live in a mansion? Is it because you want to feel safe? Is it because you want better access to educational system? Is it because you get access to uh, uh, neighbors that you love to do business with or play golf with or uh, hang out with? Is it because somebody in your family always wanted to live in this neighborhood or go to this school or participate in these type of activities in the community? Is it, is it because you feel a certain amount of status, amount of confidence that you feel you can do it and you accomplish it and that feeling just makes you feel great about accomplishing that goal? What about travel? Do you want to explore the world? You know, oftentimes people say, when I explore the world, man, the more grateful I am about America. I think which is something that is very lacking in America today. People are lacking the amount of self-respect and love they have for this country called the United States of America. You know why? Because they haven't traveled. They don't see how bad the rest of the world is as compared to the United States of America. Side note, how many guys agree with that? Those of uh, my brothers and sisters in the military who travel the world. Or if you're a missionary, you travel the rest of the world to serve people who are less fortunate than we are in the United States of America. And perhaps traveling is going to expose your children to how great they have it here in America in terms of flush, you know, being able to flush the toilet, running water, refrigeration, paved roads. Being able to go to the store and buy food, where in other countries, that's just not readily available. How about being debt-free, that your check comes in and you write one bill to your mortgage or your rent? That's it. Maybe your cell phone company, that's it. But no credit cards, you don't feel the burden on your shoulders that you don't owe anybody anything. That you have freedom and options and choices because now you are debt-free. Instead of money going to the bank or another financial institution, you're going back to the financial institution called U-Bank. Your family bank, and your family is earning interest on your money versus some other financial institution. How would you like that? See, that's being specific in why you potentially would want a certain goal. But self-respect, how would you like to walk into a room and instead of just being another one of the guys or gals, the event is because you are participating because you're talking at it, you're speaking at it, you're significant at it. You walk into your respected amongst your peers, your friends, that you stand for something, your self-worth is being expressed because you achieve a certain goal because you understand why you want something. All this goes into what you want, why you want it. Boom, boom. And then the third part about it, the third part about this formula then is how to get there. How do you get to be debt free? How are you going to buy that house? How are you going to make sure that nobody ever lays you off again, that you have the right type of income insurance, that no matter what happens, pandemic, recession, layoffs, cutbacks, furloughs, that you're still okay, that you have an income that you've worked on, maybe on the side as a plan B, now becomes plan A because other outside forces no longer say you're going to be working here, but you're okay because you started a side business, you started a side hustle, you started to unpack what it means to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Because being a millionaire makes you feel great and you feel like nobody's going to push you around and nobody's going to say you're not good enough to work here, or whatever that may be. How are you going to get there? What type of time are you willing to invest to get there? What type of conferences do you need to attend? What type, of, what type of levels of competition do you need to compete in in terms of creating a better product, creating a better service, making sure that you're in business? What skills did you have to adapt? What website, what social media uh, uh, profile or skill sets do you need to adapt to make sure that when people are looking around for somebody just like you, they choose you versus your competitor? How are you going to make sure he gets there? How are you going to make sure that you achieve some form of financial independence. How are you going to make sure that you achieve some form of self worth How are you going to get there? So you have to find a vehicle in how to get there. 
Because I ask many entrepreneurs, if not this, to help you get to where you want to go, then what else? Go back to your job? Go back to a business that wasn't as profitable? To go back to a hobby that you weren't really making money on, but you were having a blast, having fun, but it wasn't having a profit at the end of the day? Are you gonna go back to that? Or are you gonna say, you know what, let me personally develop, let me take courage and say, you know what, let me uh, straighten up my act, let me take some coaching, let me take some feedback, constructive criticism, from people that I respect, how are you gonna get there? And more importantly, when you figure out how to get there, my questions for you, my friends, future cash flow millionaires, how bad do you want it? It's not a head thing, it's a stomach, spirit, soul thing, your gut thing. Are you really willing to put in the work? Are you willing to study? Are you willing to adapt? your current skills to acquire new ones? Are we willing to purge the way, old ways that things that weren't working to adopt the things that are going to help you progress moving forward? So this is the formula. And here's the thing what I realized about becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire, especially as an entrepreneur, when you have control on your side in terms of, th some, in terms of something that you either have to sell or provide a service to, then this becomes not only a simple formula, but this becomes a simple math problem. How many products do you have to sell? How many units do you have to sell? How many applications do you have to sell? How many clients do you have to sell in order to then make one million, one million dollars? Simple math problem. Now the question you gotta ask yourself is how much time am I then willing to commit to make sure that movement of those products and or services are going to happen to result in total sales of X amount of dollars, so therefore I can take home net income $1 million. See, my wife and I, we go through this all the time. And as soon as we started tracking our numbers, it just took us 37 months to go from zero to making our first cash flow million dollars. And we've never looked back ever since. And if folks like my wife and I can do it, simple, average, and ordinary people, I didn't go to Harvard, I didn't go to Stanford. I don't have a fancy degree behind me. I don't have a rich family to give me a financial head start. I didn't have a right credit score to get things started. I was a United States Marine. I was your average Joe. I just enlisted into the Marine just to get out of Chicago, to experience something very new for the very first time in my life. Because the biggest dream of my old neighborhood was just graduating high school. That was a big dream. So therefore, you can work for the unions. I, I said, man, I, I, I need to see what else is out there. And Uncle Sam gave me a shot. And Uncle Sam exposed my vision because we were stationed in one of the richest cities and counties in America, which is Orange County, California, San Diego County. And as a Marine, I was able to see all these different things. And I started asking myself these questions. How does this person buy this house on the top of the hill? How does this person drive a Porsche, a Lamborghini, a Ferrari? What does this person do? Can I do it? Can I get to learn what they learned? Can I start surrounding myself with people that's gonna get them to the next level? How do I get access to the type of people this person has access to? I wasn't having envy towards them. I was asking questions. And what gave me a lot of confidence is once I figured out this formula, what gave me a lot of confidence is this, working for myself for the very first time. What gave me a lot of confidence is this, that I was willing to get up and work every day. I was willing to get up to work every day and pound the phones and make connections and screw up my scripts and deal with a lot of failure. And by the way, to first generation cash flow millionaires, it's not that we're a void of failure or mistakes or setbacks. Matter of fact, we just do them faster than a lot of people watching this video. So if you think that there's some form of magic formula, some sort of shortcut, well here it is. Clear about what you want, why do you want it, how to get there and how bad do you want it? Because here's the thing, Nobody can answer this question, whether it's money, success, work ethic. What are you willing to do in terms of priorities? And that's the biggest part. I see the way people spend their time. What did the pandemic teach us? If you did not come out of this pandemic with a new skill set, a new business, it's been a year now. At the cutting of this uh, video and the editing of this video and the posting of this video, this is officially the first week that we've had the World Health Organization officially mentioned that 
the pandemic is a global threat. It's been a year now. Have you learned something new? Well, if you have not learned something new, you haven't learned how to fill in the gaps here. Well, my friends, I'm glad then you are now watching the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel. Maybe perhaps you can fill in some of the blanks that you might have in your life. And for whatever reason, you come across this channel, you want some specifics on how to get there, listen, subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow our page on Facebook, we want to provide you access or an insight on what industries, what type of people that you need to surround yourself with, what industry you need to get involved in, what type of work ethic, and really inspiring for you to get your mind right. Because here's what I discovered. Sales, business, all this stuff. I, you know, I'm not in a very technical field, even though we're the world of finance and insurance seems to be very technical. But after a while, you start to figure out how to sell life insurance or whatever product or service. You figure out how to sell real estate. You figure out how to sell you know, dental services or chiropractic services, whatever that is that you're selling, whatever, what business that you're involved in. But all that stuff is superficial. If you're not clear about what you want, why you want it, how to specifically get there, and how bad do you want it. That being said, guys, let me know your thoughts, your comments, your questions. I'm inspired by you. That's why we do these things. Before I let you go, watch a couple videos here. Number one is how to crush 2021 like a millionaire. And the second video I want you to watch is the last thing that millionaires think about when we were on the beaches of Maui a couple weeks ago with my CEO, founder, and mentor, Patrick Ben David, the host of Valuetainment, closer to now 3 million subscribers. And what he says is the last thing he's thinking about after putting in all this work, the last thing we're thinking about on the beaches of Maui there with our children as uh, my son celebrated his two-year birthday in the beaches of Maui in spite of the pandemic. I think we reopened uh, the height regions where we're staying at. We are one of the first big groups to come in there. And folks, this is happening more and more in a lot of different cities and states. There are more and more businesses are starting to uh, open up. A lot more people are starting to feel more confident about getting around and doing business again like it was pre-pandemic. I'd like to say that we're not going to respect the people that uh, need to put on masks and social distance, but this, just put it this way. A lot more people are overcoming their fears because what they want is more important than staying in the position of isolation or fear. With that being said, put your thoughts in the comments, your questions in the follow-ups in the comment section below. Let me know what your thoughts, what you're thinking. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page at Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, thanks for watching the Seven Fear Squad YouTube channel. I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. Let's <laughs> go.